Hey guys, welcome to episode number 153. Today is Wednesday, so it's DIY Wednesday. And I have a few announcements. Uh, obviously, I'm back from my vacation, uh, honeymoon in Maui for 10 days. And uh, I have some footage uh, that I'll share later of uh, some guppies that I found, some wild guppies that I found while I was there. Uh, I took a few videos of them, uh, obviously didn't bring them back, but uh, they're non-native. Um, they looked, you know, like your typical wild-caught guppy, and uh, it's pretty cool to see them in the wild. But anyways, um, one other quick announcement. Um, my 1,000 subscriber contest is ending tonight at midnight Eastern Time, uh, the 15th. So uh, by the time I upload this, it should be just about over. Uh, so make sure you get any last minute comments in to any of my new videos in order to qualify. And uh, I'll be shooting a video um, shortly of me drawing the winners. Uh, I'll try to contact the winners and confirm those people uh, before I post the winners. So stay tuned for that uh, next week. But I just wanted to show you guys the progress that I've made since I've returned home on the fish room and uh, obviously the tanks have been removed uh, a lot of it's kind of been deconstructed uh, but in a good way as you can see the sump tank has been removed and in its place I have a drain line and that runs all the way over here the length of these tanks kind of snakes around this corner here uh, and then it ends up over here so uh, this is now the overflow for the 100 gallon stock tank and uh, it's only a one inch line, uh, but I'm anticipating only 40 gallons of water per day uh, at the most going through that pipe. So this is way overkill for that amount of water. Uh, but it also doubles as an emergency uh, overflow. So if the power shuts off, uh, all of the water in the system is going to drain down into here. And then the water level in here obviously is gonna rise fairly quickly. Uh, and hopefully this will start a siphon and uh, any water that kind of backs up over it will be uh, siphoned out for fairly quickly uh, and I shouldn't have any problems here since this is oversized uh, the sump at least um, I should be fine but uh, so that's the that's the overflow line and uh, the only other thing that I've done is um, the overflow manifold uh, the wastewater manifold uh, for all four of these tanks and uh, what I've done uh, and this is actually a good opportunity to show this before I put the tanks back up here is I've run this two inch line all the way back behind and uh, what I'm going to do is uh, take a piece of uh, flexible tubing and attach uh, each one of these to the tanks uh, on their bulkheads on the back side and what that's going to do is allow the overflow water from those tanks to spill over into this bottom manifold. There's a little bit of a slope on it, so it's going to head all the way down here uh, to this corner and uh, then come out over here uh, and into my sump tank. Um, this is actually the same manifold that I had before. Uh, and as you can see here, and two more over here uh, I do have some adapters uh, and that's a retrofit I did cut this pipe in several places and reattach it uh, because I did have the overflow uh, water coming out here into the 20 gallon sump but since that's been removed because it was undersized um, I have repaired that line and uh, it should be good to go so almost all of my plumbing is done um, I have a few things in the way here, but uh, the last bit of plumbing that I have left to do here is with my pump. Um, now what I have here is a bypass, uh, which is going to allow some of the water back into the sump. Uh, and I'm actually going to direct this to um, blow directly into uh, my filter, uh, but then the other side is the plumbing that I have left to do and that's going to come up go over under up and then it's going to be the top manifold I'm replacing the entire top manifold uh, with one inch line 
and uh, with my uh, ball valves here and uh, that should allow me to fine tune the amount of water that's entering each one of these tanks I'm also putting a ball valve here so that I can fine tune what percentage of the water um, comes out the bypass versus what percent of the water uh, actually makes it to the tanks uh, which should give me complete control over this pump that I have uh, even though it is a little bit too strong uh, for what I'm trying to do and uh, in terms of the filter you know, I'll probably go over this uh, in another video once I've kind of finalized it uh, for right now all I'll say is I've got a tote here I think it's uh, like uh, you know like a five or ten dollar special from from your local you know hardware store or whatever and uh, fairly large fairly large size and then I have a five gallon uh, bucket uh, in the middle and as you can see here that's going to hopefully act as my drip plate and uh, the water that exits this pipe is going to drip into and down the five gallon bucket um, and I have holes drilled at the bottom of the five gallon bucket to allow the water to escape there and then the water has to rise up into um, this tote and then the only place I have holes in the tote is uh, up top along this rim here uh, so then the water will spill out into the sump and then get picked up by the pump again and essentially if you've seen a, uh, a trickle filter uh, or a sump tank before uh, you might be familiar with baffles and uh, that's essentially what's happening here but in a circular manner um, make forcing the water to go all the way to the bottom and then forcing the water to come all the way to the top before it spills over into the rest of the sump tank is uh, essentially what I'm accomplishing there and then the last piece here that I have for right now are just my uh, my two heaters uh, my two Eheim heaters and uh, I don't want them to rest against the plastic uh, because that could melt the plastic so what I've done is I've just taken a two and a half gallon tank tipped it on its side and suction cup those heaters uh, to that glass tank that will allow those heaters to rest safely in the middle of the water column next to where a lot of the water flow is going to uh, occur and uh, keep that away from the plastic but anyways guys all I have left to do here are to replace my four tanks and uh, hook those up and then run my top uh, return manifold and uh, then I should be in business so um, look forward to that video uh, I'll probably be wrapping this project up this weekend and I'll have a, a running fish room uh, at that time and uh, I do have uh, an order in with Adrian Hernandez uh, for some of his uh, N-Class Endlers live bearers. So uh, look forward to the arrival of those once the system is up and running. Uh, I'll have 10 pairs in each one of these tanks and uh, each one will represent a different color variation. So uh, very excited about that. Everything is finally coming together. And uh, you know, I'll be pleased once everything is on and working uh, correctly. So uh, one last thing that I did here was I actually installed a little shelf and that will allow my air pumps to sit above the water level of these tanks, uh, which should allow them to not have to work quite as hard to pump that air uh, down um, so deep uh, into these tanks. But uh, anyways, guys, that's what I've got for now. Uh, pretty exciting stuff. Can't wait to get it all up and running. I hope you guys can see the progress that I've made even though I've been away for for quite some time uh, and I look forward to finishing this project off and uh, going into a little bit more detail on on the entire system and how it works um, in the near future. So stay tuned and make sure you check out my um, my contest uh, if it's not already too late to enter and uh, look forward to the winners being announced. I'm really excited about that. Anyways, guys, see you later.